Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're calling from. Good morning. Maybe you're on the other side of the world. I don't know. Uh, welcome to our brain health and wellness class. We are really, really excited today to have Dr. Aisa Santos here, who is a uh, chiropractor, uh, to give a really great talk on upper cervical spine and post-concussion syndrome, as uh, many of us are unfortunately very familiar with post-concussion syndrome. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the board president of the Brain Injury Alliance. My name is Sabrina Bonaparte, and uh, I am a caregiver for my husband, Brandon, who had his brain injury 10 years ago. Um, Dr. Santos, I could read your wonderful bio that you prevent, provided to me, but I would also love for you to introduce yourself as well so that we get a good uh, sense of who you are and why you're here and why you're so passionate about this topic. So over to you. Yeah, thank you. So good afternoon, good morning, or good evening to everyone. My name is Dr. Aixa Santos. I am an upper cervical chiropractor in here in Seattle. And before we dive into the upper cervical spine and post concussion syndrome, I'm going to give you a little bit of my background. So, let me see. I'll move this down here. There we go. So, I have a biology degree from the University of Puerto Rico, hence the accent. I am Puerto Rican. Um, after my biology degree, I decided to move to South Carolina where I studied uh, my doctorate in chiropractic in Sherman College of Chiropractic. And after I graduated, I decided to um, move to Seattle to have a mentor um, that I was, is one of the best instructors in the technique that I am passionate about, that is the Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractic Technique. And I am now um, certified as proficient in that technique. Um, so, I moved here to Seattle. My whole objective with this um, upper cervical technique is to bring something different to people about what is chiropractic and give people or give them hopes and help your body actually heal. So my main objective is less adjusting, give you more stability, give you longer term results so you can live your life with a better quality of life without in, uh, being dependent on the chiropractor. So that's a little bit about me. Um, let's dive in. Let's see if I can use this. Perfect. Alrighty. So today we're going to be talking about the role of the upper cervical spine in a concussion or post concussion syndrome. And I want to first start defining what is a concussion. So it is a mild traumatic brain injury that affects the functions of your brain. It is defined as a complex pathophysiology, a pathophysiological process that affects the brain induced by a traumatic biomechanical force, secondary or direct to indirect forces of the head. So in simple terms, a concussion is an injury to the brain that results in temporary loss of normal function. Approximately 1.6 to 3.8 million of sports and recreation related traumatic brain injuries occurs in the United States each year. Most of these are not treated in the hospitals or in an uh, emergency room. And many people assume that a concussion involves passing out or a loss of consciousness, but it's not true. And in several um, cases, it doesn't even have external signs like bleeding. So a lot of people kind of take concussion as not as a priority or as a severity as it is. Like concussion is a brain injury and there's no minor concussion or major concussion. It's a concussion, no matter how hard uh, was the, the trauma. And there's three different um, mechanisms of injury. So the first one and the most um, common one will be direct impact brain injury. That one happens when you hit your head with a wall or with a bat or with someone else's head or with a windshield or steer wheel. So there's going to be a direct impact to your head with an object. The second um, mechanism is the acceleration, disacceleration brain injury. That one, of course, when you have a car accident 
or you get tackled by, by someone. Um, so your head is going to go back and forward. When your head does that in a high speed, your brain moves inside. And when it moves inside, it actually hit itself inside the skull. That's the acceleration, disacceleration brain injury. The second, uh, the third one that is the blast brain injury, that one is the most common in American soldiers because it's caused by explosives or, uh, or an explosion. And the shock waves are the ones traveling to your head and the shock waves hit your brain, um, giving it a concussion or a brain injury. Those are the, the three, three main um, mechanisms of injury. So after you get a concussion, there's some symptoms that are related with the concussions. So this um, table, I, I got it from the facts for physicians about mild traumatic brain injury, and it's from the CDC. And we, have, we are having here uh, divided by four. We have physical um, symptoms that can be headache, nausea, vomiting, balance problems, dizziness, visual problems, fatigue, sensitivity, sensitivity to light or noise, numbness of tingling could be in your neck, could be hands and, or feet, and you may get then dazed or stuck. We also have cognitive um, symptoms, so feeling foggy, very slow down, difficulty concentrating or remembering, you get very forgetful of recent information or you get, are very confused in the conversations. Um, you answer questions slowly or repeat a lot of the questions or stuff. The other one could be emotional. So you can get very irritable. irritable. You can get sad or more emotional than normal or very nervous. And it can also affect your sleep. So you can be very drowsy or sleep less than normal or more than normal or have trouble um, falling asleep. Usually the main one is uh, insomnia. So uh, a lot of people, a lot of the time, people don't um, take the injury seriously because it might not show anything in the CT or MRI. But the MRI and the CT are actually done to see if there is any bleeding on the brain, if there's any fracture of the skull or any pathology. It, it is not a method to diagnose concussion. Concussion is a very complex uh, right now in our medical world because it is very hard to be diagnosed with a concussion since it is not related with um, unconsciousness. It is not related with um, any type of imaging because it's more um, chemical and microscopic. So when people don't take this um, injury seriously, a lot of times what happens is that they, they come to experience post-concussion syndrome. And what is post-concussion syndrome? So the World Health Organization describes it as a syndrome that occurs following a head trauma, um, usually sufficiently severe to result in loss of consciousness, and includes a number of disparate symptoms like headaches, dizziness, fatigue, irritability, difficulty in concentration and performing mental tasks, impairment of memory, insomnia, reduced tolerance to stress, emotional excitement, or alcohol. And when looking in a, in a study found that when looking at the prevalence of post-concussion syndrome, 27.8% of the people went to suffer from post-concussion syndrome. Traditionally in chiropractic, Many symptoms of post-concussion have been seen help by correcting the function of the upper neck. And you will ask why. So there's a similarity between post-concussion symptoms and symptoms of whiplash-associated disorder. So what is whiplash? It's a neck injury. It is due to a forceful back and forward, kind of like a cracking of a whip. Of the neck, right? And it causes it can be caused by car accident, by sports injuries, physical abuse, or even as little as a fall. And it's also called a neck sprain or strain. So an injury or dysfunction to the to the upper neck can show 
um, symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, loss of balance, nausea, visual and auditory disturbances, reduced cognitive function, and many other symptoms that are similar to the post-concussion syndrome. So because of these similarities, it's very important to evaluate the upper neck after having a concussion. There was a study involving football players that they actually um, check how much force you need to have to get a concussion. So the acceleration force for a concussion is 60 to 160 Gs. For a whiplash, you only need 4.5 Gs. So based on that um, study, they discovered that if you have a concussion, most likely you have a neck injury or a whiplash. And that's one of the things that people don't actually look at when they are having a, a concussion because they are trying to figure it out what is going on with the brain and they're not looking lower what is going on with the neck. So let's dive in a little bit more in the cervical spine or in the upper neck. So the cervical spine, it is um, made of seven vertebras. It is divided in the lower and upper um, spine. So we're gonna be focusing on the upper neck. The upper spine, it is different in shape and function from the remainder of the spine. And also these articulations are protecting uh, neurological and vascular structures in our upper neck. So what makes the upper neck? So uh, a more um, fancy word or scientific word is called cranio-cervical junction. Cranio-cervical junction is the same thing as upper neck. So I'm gonna be just talking about upper neck to make it a little bit easier for you guys. So the upper neck, it links your skull to your C1 or atlas and your C2 or axis. And this um, link is also linking the foramen magnum where your brain stem drops down as a spinal cord and the first bone um, with the spinal panel. So again, the craniocervical junction or upper neck, it is comprised of the inferior surface of the skull the atlas C1 axis C2, and also has muscles and connective tissue that are attaching your skull to the cervical spine. It encloses the central nervous system, encephalic vasculature, and the cerebrospinal fluid system. So it is a lot of neurology and a lot of, of stuff going on in that area. It's a very complex area. That's why it's so important. So the alignment of the occiput to your atlas and axis is crucial for the integrity and function of the architecture of the spinal cord and midbrain um, structures. So here we have um, your C1 or atlas, C2 or axis. They are so, much, um, so different from the rest of the spine. And these two uh, joints are called the atlantoaxial joint. So the C1, C2 joint. And it's very unique, complex. In that joint, 45 to 50% of the rotation in our neck occurs in that joint. So it's very movable. So that joint, what it does is that sacrifices the stability for mobility. And the upper neck co um, connection is primarily ligamentous. So it has a lot of ligament and membrane trying to get that neck stabilized. So I'm showing this, it is a little bit overwhelming. I'm showing this just because I want you guys to see the complexity of our upper neck, but I'm gonna go over very, very um, uh, simple. Yeah? So again, our upper neck is primary ligamentous and, mem and membranous, and the damage or injury to any of those ligaments or tendons can cause instability of the upper neck and can cause excess motion. If that occurs, that can lead to compression of the vertebral arteries and irritation of your central nervous system. And those all play a big role in the headaches, neck pain, and dizziness after a head or neck trauma. 
So there's other ligaments that play a big role in um, those symptoms as well. They are called the dentic ligaments. So what we're seeing here, this is your first bone here. This here is your spinal cord. Your spinal cord is the main cable that connects your brain with your body. It has more than three trillion nerve pathways. So it connects everything in your body. And it's kind of like a yellowish mucousy thing that the body protects it robustly with bones. That's why we have a, a spinal column. And inside here, it is full of tissues and ligaments trying to um, protect them. So one of the ligaments are these two little things here. Those are called the dentic ligaments. The dentic ligaments, they attach to your spinal cord to the one of the tissues that protect your spinal cord and they attach to the inner ring of your first bone. So if there's excess of motion or instability in the upper neck, that causes a misalignment in the upper neck. These ligaments here begin to torque or twist. They cause tension in your spinal cord. That's where the neurological assault occurs. Okay. So pretty much if you put your fist, I don't know, you guys can also see me, but if you put your fist like this, this is your brain. Your brain begins the brain stem and then begins the spinal cord. This is your first bone. If it moves, you're gonna feel some tension. That's kind of what is going on with the tissues of your spinal cord. So it's, those ligaments are putting tension in the spinal cord and their ligaments. So in, this is a, a, a hypothesis or a theory, but this hypothesis states that misalignments of the upper cervical spine because of their unique attachment to the spinal cord by the dentic ligaments can directly stress and deform the spinal cord. So what happens if, if that occurs, right? That makes an impact in your entire nervous system. So your nervous system is the one controlling your heart, is the one controlling your lungs, your digestion, your um, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, um, sleep, your mood. So it can also potentially be causing headaches, neck pain, dizziness, and cognitive functions. So having that upper neck out of alignment can be the cause of many of the symptoms caused by after a uh, uh, head or neck trauma. So what is usually done after having a concussion? So for most people, the treatment, they just say, tell you to just rest. But that it is actually a little bit more complex than that. So for the cases that I work, people usually see several providers to try to help with those symptoms. So you can seek for an upper cervical chiropractor to check your upper neck and make sure that it's in, um, in alignment and that your tissues are okay, doing okay. You can go to physical therapy, the steroidal therapy, you can do vision therapy. So there's a little bit of many therapies that can help with the um, with the symptoms. So make sure that you don't get into post-concussion syndrome and you are living your life years and years with those symptoms. So what I do, I am an upper cervical chiropractor. The technique that I um, the technique that I, I do is the Blair upper cervical technique. And it's pretty much, we believe that the upper neck is the main area. If that area is out of alignment, it can affect anything in your body. So if you look at this diagram, if your upper neck is out of alignment, it can put one shoulder higher than the other. It can put a hip higher than the other. So that is making muscles work more or less. That is um, making joints more more or less, and that can cause the generation of the joints, and that also causing uh, tension in your spinal cord. So, what is why the Blair upper cervical chiropractic is different? Because we are precise, gentle, and specific. So, precise, we use uh, a series of diagnosis tests, tests that include evaluating the structure of your alignment, precise imaging and identifying the heat imbalance in the nervous system. So we can see how your nervous system is functioning. It is gentle. So we are not cracking, popping, or twisting your neck. 
We do inform, precise, and gentle adjustment to the upper neck to help restore the normal function of your nervous system. And it is effective. We actually are not treating symptoms. We are working with your body so it can heal itself and perform at the optimal level at the same time that it maintains a long-lasting correction. So our objective is not to adjust you every single time that you come in. Our objective is to get you a precise adjustment and make sure that your body holds that correction so that your body is actually going to healing and getting more and more stable. Uh, so the imaging that we use here in our clinic and a lot of the upper cervical chiropractors are using, it is called a CBCT, so comb beam computer tomography. It takes a 3D image of your neck. It has 80% less radiation than normal x-rays, and it gives most, give us a lot of more information. So with that information, we make the most precise diagnosis of the misalignment. That's what makes our work so And now I want to share you with you guys. Uh, this is uh, Jim, I, I'm probably not pronouncing his last name correctly, but Jim McMahon, he is an ex-NFL player. He had several head traumas while playing football, and he got help from an operational chiropractor. And I just wanted you guys to see his story. Take it one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is what I do to try to keep my brain sharp during the day. I've got these puzzles and it uh, helps me to just try to remember things, you know, colors and where things go. Uh, I knew I was missing a couple of pieces. You know, the doctor actually told me that this would actually be good for me to help keep my brain sharp and functioning because it's at times it, it tends to wander. Jim McMahon is 56 years old. He now spends most of his time in the Scottsdale, Arizona home, where the dry desert air best suits his long list of post football aches and pains. <laughs> this is my day when say, what am I doing? What am I looking for? But what the climate can't combat are the symptoms associated with brain trauma McMahon suffered as a player. Bad headaches, pressure on my skull. I couldn't see very well, I couldn't talk very well. All I wanted to do was lay down. My head was just constantly pounding. The pain had gotten so bad, right? If I ever had a gun, I would have been there. And these two doctors from New York called me and said, hey, we think we can help you. We think we know what's going on. I said, let's do it. Jim was diagnosed with early onset dementia. They had been complaining about a brain fog, as he described it, uh, as well as, as he described it, headache where he felt like ice picking uh, on both sides of his brain. While most concussion studies are focused on the brain, McMahon's team traces the effects of CTE directly to the upper spine, having found that neck misalignment can block the flow of spinal fluid and cool toxic proteins directly onto the brain. Spinal fluid is white. That's the spinal cord. This is the spinal column. What you're seeing is a narrowing of the opening where the spinal fluid is supposed to come through. Most times when you're having head problems, it's all they look at is the head. These guys are smart enough to at least look below the head at the neck and see if there was a problem somewhere. They found my problem. They're not going to be able to reverse the damage. Like I said, that stuff was sitting in there for 20 years. How much it ate away in my brain, I don't know. Using detailed images captured by the MRI scans, McMahon regularly receives targeted adjustments, clearing the blockage and restoring the flow of spinal fluid. This instrument is going to generate a temporal mechanical tapping that is just slightly going to put those bones right back into normal position. Okay. Let's sit back up. First time they did this procedure, 
within two minutes, it was like the toilet brush. I could feel this stuff actually leaving my brain. My eyes cleared up, my speech cleared up. So what was before the right is after? Can you see how much there is there? The yeah, there's less than here. Instead of all this white stuff being there, you see more brain tissue than here. So it's already started to bring over the next several days and going to take more. What damage it's done is done. I can't I can't reverse it. But what these guys do for me, they keep me from having these bad pains, having these suicidal thoughts, having they function fairly normally while you know, while I can't. So this is one of the um, stories that really got me to be um, passionate about the operation of the spine. Um, and it really makes sense. Do you, do you and Mike did have that agreement whereby if you choose to, you can override it? We have a lot of agreements. <laughs> they don't always uh, work, but... McMahon. McMahon was just a rebel, man. Quarterbacks at that time were pretty. Pretty respectable, and then comes this guy at a BYU who like, has a mohawk. Sorry about that. <laughs> Alrighty, sorry about that. Um, so again, um, the upper cervical spine it is very um, important. It's very complex, and it potentially we see a lot of different um, cases that can be helped by making sure that your upper cervical spine is back in alignment. Um, so I want you guys to let, let you with this. So your body is the best doctor. Um, we are always treating symptoms by taking drugs or maybe doing stretches or exercises, but we never are looking for the root cause of those symptoms. And if your body is able to heal when you have a little um, cut in your finger, it is able to also heal yourself from the inside. And the healing process is not linear, so it goes up and down, but usually what we see is people after getting their upper cervical chiropractic um, adjustment, their lives change, we have a better quality of life because we're actually letting their body work properly and heal properly. These are some of my references that I used for this um, presentation. And this is my contact information. You can email me, that is my personal email. You can call the office or you can text me to the number 425 that will be coming directly to my cell phone. And you can check us um, our website in healthfirsthire.com. See. So, What symptoms does it help with? Um, what type of, of symptoms are you referring, um, James? Can we get um, the ones? Yeah, the the ones he was talking. You know, headache, brain fog, mm -hmm. um, moving headaches, things. You know, things like that. That's when this was sent out. I said, "Oh, I have all those symptoms." Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we see that like that's pretty much my my playground every day. That's kind of the people that actually finish seeking for upper cervical um, chiropractic is because they have this very complex symptoms that doesn't seem to be helped by traditional chiropractic or um, physical therapy or anything like that. Um, so I, I have seen people with brain fog being able to be back clear. Um, I, I had a, a recent post concussion patient that she said that she was two years without being able to work. She, she wasn't able, able to like help her daughter um, to like clean their, their, their um, room or anything without actually feeling fatigued and tired for like three days in a row after that. And since she has been under chiropractic care, she gets he less headaches and she's able to work again and she's able to, to enjoy her life with her kids. So we see a lot of different symptoms. I, 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 that's why I cannot say that we are treating the symptoms. 
because it's mostly giving your body ability back to work properly and heal properly. Um, so that's why I, I can say that symptoms can vary. The symptoms are, um, that we see here in, in doctors or in other medicine practices. May I um, ask a question? Yeah. Um, this lady from my church who's been in, um, in, in an induced coma because of her seizing of the brain seizures, um, could that be conducive to her walking condition? You know, her spinal cord. So that's something that I I will have to like actually see all the diagnosis, the tests, and the history of the patient to see if, if they are actually a candidate for an upper cervical spine. But most of the time, uh, up, making sure that your spine is in alignment. It helps improve some stuff. Not necessarily it will help cure a lot of different stuff that are, might be a little bit more um, complex than what you're um, talking about. So it so could potentially benefit. So what you're saying is, if her um, spine is in, in right alignment, the seizures that could induce the seizures in her brain. Yeah. So we have seen some some seizures. So some those are what I call com complex cases. So sometimes seizures can be actually caused by a misalignment in the spine, but okay. other things are not. So those are the patients that I'm always telling them, you know, like uh, my job is to make sure that your spine is in alignment, your body has to heal. If it's caused by an upper cervical misalignment, you might see some um, benefits from the seizures. Okay. So both cases, some, sometimes seizures can be causing by an upper cervical misalignment, and other times they are a lot more complex than that. Right. So they can be in seizures can be um made by or could put be something more going on in the brain because of the um the spinal cord not being in alignment. Mm -hmm. Seizures. Okay. Uh, Sarah said, I'm curious about the whiplash and G-force research mentioned earlier. Are there any studies that have evaluated women and concussion and whiplash? Is there a different force threshold for trigger whiplash neck injury in women versus men? That's actually a good question. I Most of the time, the research that they have been doing with um, concussion usually is um, football players, soccer players, and most of the time men. Uh, but the case studies that we have seen um, for uh, upper cervical and post-concussion syndrome, um, there has been women that have got, got of course, uh, benefit about the upper neck. But if that would be a, a, an interesting um, study to do, if there's any difference between uh, force needed to cause a whiplash or a concussion in a male or a female. How was the obstruction relief flow of, of the cerebral spinal fluid validated? So they um, did a pre and post um, C MRI. And in the MRI, you can see the, the cerebral spinal fluid. So in the pre, you saw that there, there was a lot more. And at the end of the video, it shows if there was a lot more white stuff in the brain. That means that there's a lot of fluid in the brain. In the other screen that was the post after the adjustment it, it is more brain and less fluid so the fluid wasn't getting stuck in the brain that's kind of how they were able to see the obstruction and how it was really does that make sense no um so you're saying fluid from the spinal cord can get stuck in the brain mm -hmm. so the fluid of this of the cerebral spinal fluid the cerebral spinal fluid goes to your brain, bring nutrients, and make sure that your brain is healthy, takes out the toxin. So when there's a misalignment in the upper neck, it can cause that that cerebral spinal fluid gets stuck in your brain. Oh, and that's okay. kind of what, uh, in the video of um, the NFL player, they show how the cerebral spinal fluid was affecting his case. Okay, and could that cause seizures? Not necessarily, but it could potentially. 
seizures are completely another another thing, right? Okay. It's completely different. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, what is the difference between NUCA and Blair? So NUCA and Blair, we are we are both upper cervical techniques. We are both gentle and precise. Um, the easiest way for me to describe that is your spine is in a box, and this box has holes, and we are looking from different perspectives. So from these different poles, that's kind of how I describe uh, the different methods. So we're um, Blair looks more about the asymmetry of the spine, and we have a different way of looking at the joints than Nuka. Nuka looks more uh, to the posture as well. Does that make sense? So Barbara asked, how does chiropractic therapy differ from craniosacral therapies? So craniosacral was um, developed by an osteopathic doctor. Right now, craniosacral has, be has been teached to chiropractors, um, to physical therapists, and to um, massage therapists. So it's just a craniosacral, it is mainly focusing in the sutures of your cranium and your sacrum and chiropractic is more in the spine. Um, we see that usually patients that have both chiropractic and craniosacral therapy, they work really well together. Um, making sure like for in what I see in my practice is um, people get to hold their correction longer when they have craniosacral therapy and, chiro and chiropractic together. Um, Lorna, do you take Medicare? I'm actually a provider of Medicare. But I don't take a lot of the, uh, of the insurances. Linda, can the cervical misalignment cause muscles to freeze? So the cervical misalignment can affect the muscles, so they can get um, tense or stable. So a lot of the time, people feel a lot of tension in the upper uh, neck or upper back, and it could potentially be because of cervical misalignment. Um, thank you, Stacy, for Stacy saying that pink concussions has studies on female brain and concussion. That's, that's great. Uh, Jason. So I would love to talk with you, Jason, later on. We can um, talk more about the upper cervical spine and the TBI. Thank you, Stacy, for um, sharing the pain concussions um, website. Um, Barbara asked, in addition to alignment, there are any recommendations to help maintain the strength and integrity of the neck muscles and ligaments? Yes. So um, my focus is to make sure that your spine is back in alignment, but there's some stuff so, like physical therapy, making sure that your muscles are working properly. There's no weakness in one side and more um, tension in the other side. Also, massage therapy helps relax the muscles. Um, making sure that you are more, you're doing your exercises, your emotion, you're not just sitting and not doing much with your body. Um, nutrition is super important as well for your brain and digestive uh, system. So what you eat, can very impact in how you're feeling. So there's a lot of different things that can be um, in, like integration with the upper cervical spine to make sure that you have a better health and wellness. So what I always tell my patient is that the upper cervical spine is only one, pos, uh, one piece of the puzzle, but we need several pieces to make sure that we are health and wellness. And that's where our mental health comes in that's where our nutrition comes in. That's where we want to make sure that our muscles are working properly, that we, we are uh, moving, so the exercise and all that stuff. Ready. So frozen shoulders can be a little bit um, complex. Like I had a patient with frozen shoulder that react really well with the upper cervical care, but she was also seeing a physical therapy because it needs 
to work the, the muscles and ligament. And we are to, I, I focus on the spine and the physical therapy will focus in the, in the soft tissue. All right, so if, Lorna, if you can um, send me a text or an email, we can um, schedule a uh, talk as well. All right, any other questions? Well, thanks everyone for participating in the chat. That was a uh, very engaging uh, set of questions that you all asked. Great. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah. And Dr. Santos says, good news. It sounds like everyone was really listening to what you said because they had a lot of really awesome questions for you. Yes, um, I, I do appreciate it. All of you guys for um, being in, the, in this um, webinar and this talk. Um, if, again, you have any questions, um, any concerns, don't hesitate to contact me. I would love to um, help you and see how I can um, or maybe refer you to someone around your, um, your state, wherever you're uh, um, living, or give you more, um, any, any knowledge that I can um, uh, give you. Thank you so much. And everyone, sure. let's give it virtual round, giant round of applause for Dr. Santos for taking the time, not just to come here and speak to us today and educate us, but the time that it took to put this presentation together and the time that she spends helping people in her practice, which is really important because really just very helpful for our community. So we're thankful to have people like you who help us uh, get better and uh, who, who provide this knowledge for us. Cause I, I'm hoping it sounds like from the questions in the chat, a lot of people learned a lot today. So. We really, really appreciate your time coming here um, and your the energy you just put into your work every day is greatly appreciated. So thank you. Thank you very much. And also, um, I will once again put the link in the chat. This session, as I mentioned, is recorded and it will be on our YouTube channel, uh, likely later today, unless I mess something up, which always could happen. Um, but I will uh, have this uploaded for everybody to see our other Brain health and wellness classes are also on that YouTube channel as well. So if you want to check any of the older ones out that we've done, we have another class coming up on Monday. If you attended yesterday's class with Dan, he's doing one every three weeks this or every week this month for three weeks. So he'll be coming back on Monday as well. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or Dr. Santos. If you need medical advice, do not reach out to me. Reach out to her, please. <laughs> I will not be able to answer your questions. Um, and again, we really appreciate you all joining us today. Hope to see you again in the future. And thank you again to Dr. Santos for the great education today. Yeah, thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to um, educate people about the work that I do and how I can help them. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon, evening, whatever time it is. <laughs>